have you guys ever had like a childhood fear? Like, I mean, I guess some of you guys are kind of still in your childhood, but, but for me, it was a little bit longer ago. And, and when I was really young, I used to have, I used to have like, like these childhood fears that, that now that I'm growing up, I'm realizing like don't really matter that much. Like, I don't know, who thought quicksand was, was like a really, really big deal? Like, oh my gosh, I don't ever want to find quicksand ever. Um, or, or maybe, maybe one of your fears is like, dude, if I ever am out in the cold and I put my tongue on a piece of metal, it's stuck. That's it. Like, I'm done. I'm never talking for the rest of my life. Maybe you've had a childhood fear like that. I'm sad to say that one of my childhood fears I found out recently has come true. If you've been keeping up with the news recently, you've maybe seen in Utah that there's like crazy floods going on because I had so much snow, which was really, really good for the snowboard season, but not really so good right now. And in Utah, these roads, these sinkholes are like falling into the ground. And all over, there's just parts of the earth that are just, they're just literally disappearing. And they're in sinkholes. And when I was little, I was so terrified. I would have these dreams that there'd be like an earthquake and like a hole would be opening up in the middle of the earth. And I would be like running away from the hole that's running towards me. And I'm like jumping on pieces of, of rock that are in midair. And this is happening in Utah. There's literally sinkholes that you can fall into. The earth is just giving way. And I thought it was funny as I'm reading this text and it uses that phrase because sometimes the things that we're experiencing, the things that we're going through, it can feel like that. It can feel like there's just a sinkhole in your life and you can't do anything about it. It can feel like you have to just try your hardest to run and run and run away from this danger and do everything that you can just so you don't fall into the earth. That's what life can feel like sometimes. Maybe it's from bad grades. Like I'm, I'm just drowning. I, I'm doing everything I can. I, I just have to work so hard. Or, or maybe it's just to keep up with friendships, man. Friends can can be hard to make. They can be even harder to keep. Maybe it's just circumstance that you have no control over. Something that people are doing to you. Maybe they're being mean to you. Maybe they're talking about you. Maybe it's just your relationship with your parents that hasn't been super good right now. Or maybe your parents just told you that you're moving. And everything that you know, the world as you know it, is just, it feels like it's giving way. You're having a hard time with it. It feels like everything is just against you right now. I'm saying that because as I was praying earlier, I feel as if there's someone in the room that's been their experience recently. The interesting thing about this is if you talk to humans about it, most people are going to tell you that they've felt that way before. This experience during change, when, when things around you are changing, when things aren't the same anymore, when, when you feel like you don't have control over your life, it feels like it's giving way. That's a human experience, when things just aren't going your way. It's such a human experience that the songwriter John Bellion talking about an experience like this, said these words. He said, I'm just so sick of being human. Because maybe if I wasn't human, I wouldn't have to experience these things. Maybe if I wasn't human, I wouldn't have to experience everything just going crazy around me and, and things not going my way. And, and maybe I'd, I'd be able to fix the problems that I have. And sometimes we can feel this way. I'm just sick of having a human experience. I'm sick of being human. And while it's okay to feel that way, sometimes it can make us think that God wants us to think this way. 
As we're in our relationship with God, it's like, man, everything's falling apart. Maybe God needs me to do more. Things aren't going the way I want them to. Maybe, maybe I'm just doing something wrong and, and God needs me to be perfect. I know I, I messed up on this thing. I'm not able to, to control my thoughts all the time, 100% of the time. Sometimes I still struggle. Sometimes I still mess up. And maybe because I can't be perfect, things are going wrong. Someone in here thinks that God's expectation on you is for you to be something other than human. If you're feeling that way, I want you to know this, is that his word does not say that at all. When we think about God's word, we might be expecting a highlight reel of people, but all that we see are a bunch of imperfect people that are in need of a perfect God. And especially in the Psalms, we see that. You see, the crazy thing about the Bible, and like I said, especially in the Psalms that we're talking about this week, is that it actually affirms our humanity. God knows who he made. If you're feeling human right now, God's not shocked. God's not like, oh my gosh, I, I made this person be like an angel and now they're acting like a human. No, no, no. God knows that he made humans. And actually in Genesis, when he first made us, he said that he made humanity and it was good. Now, obviously, we, we know that there's, when sin entered, there's, there's fallen things. But God knows who he made. And as we read the Psalms, it almost invites us to read ourselves into it. I know we talked last year in, or last, I know we talked last week in the prophets. And I said, this is not an experience you really want to read yourself into. And as we read the Bible, it's about the Lord. It's about God. But the Psalms invite us to read ourselves into the experience. Because as you read the Psalms, you see time and time again, over and over again, it's about God's relationship with man, but from a human perspective. Let me read you just a few. In Psalm 6, we hear the author say, I am weary with my groaning. Every night I soak my bed with tears, I drench my couch with weeping. My eye grows dim with grief. It grows old because of all my enemies. And in Psalm 106, we see the opposite, a full range of human emotion. It says, praise the Lord. Oh, give thanks to the Lord for he is good and for his steadfast love endures forever. As we read the Psalms, we see all of these human emotions. We see all of these instances where someone's feeling really human. Maybe they messed up. Maybe somebody did something to them. Maybe they're really sad. And I want you to know that maybe you're struggling with your emotions. Maybe you're struggling with your circumstances. And you feel like you need to be more than that. You're like, I should be able to control my emotions really well. I should be able to handle all these, handle all of these things perfectly. God is not expecting you to be able to do that. And as we read the Psalms, we find that to be the case. Hey man, you're human. And that's okay. God knows that. And that's why I love reading the Psalms when I'm messed up, when I'm not having a good day, when I don't like the way things are going for me when everything inside of me is screaming, Santi, you need to be more than human. I read God's word and I read the Psalms and I read people that are just like me, but that God loved anyway. 
The Psalms remind us that it is normal and it's okay that you're going through less than ideal circumstances. It's okay. But I think the best part about it and the most important part about it is that it doesn't just leave it there. So many people around you will be like, yeah, man, that's just being a human. Things just don't go your way and, and you just have to, to work, work your circumstances to be better. You need to put in more work so that way, so that way you, know, you can get out of your circumstance. But that's just the way it is. That's not what the Psalms do here. Yes, they do say that it's okay that you're human. But it doesn't leave it there. It doesn't leave you hopeless. We're going to read verses 1 through 3 again. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth gives way, though the mountains be moved into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam, though the mountains tremble at its swelling. Verse 6. The nations rage, the kingdoms totter. He utters his voice, speaking about God. The earth melts. You see, everyone else will tell you that, hey, because you're human, it's hopeless. You just have to work really hard. But what the Bible is saying here is, yes, it's okay that you're human. It's okay that you're experiencing these emotions and these feelings and these things that you're going through. But then it turns your attention to God. It says, I know the nations are raging. I know that there's wars. I know that everything around you is coming down. But all God has to do is say one word and the entire earth will melt. The Psalms don't just affirm your humanity. They don't just tell you it's okay that you're human. More importantly... They point to God's divinity. And they remind you of who God is. In Psalm 8, verses 1 through 4, it says, O Lord, our God, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory above the heavens. Out of the mouth of babies and infants, you have established strength because of your foes to still the enemy and the avenger. When I look at your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have set in place. What is man that you are mindful of him and the son of man that you care for him? The Psalms aren't just about our experience. It's about reminding us that God is sovereign. That just means he's the king. He's on the throne. He made this whole place. He's got everything under control. He decides the rules and, and he has a plan going forward for this whole world, regardless of what you're going through. God is still on the throne. Psalm 139, it talks about how God made us and how he knows every intricate part of us. And that because he made us and knows all of that, that he has the right to speak into our lives and tell us how we should do things. In Psalm 22, it's a messianic psalm. It's prophetic. It talks about the coming Messiah. And it reminds us of God's, just his power, his ability to like look into the future and, and have this plan and see it through. See, the psalms are so important for us to read. Because it reminds us that in the midst of our struggles, of our heartbreak, that we don't need to bring anything other than being human. Because we can't. Whatever you're going through, all you have to do is bring your humanity. And God will be God. He'll supply the divinity. In verse 9 of Psalm 46, it's talking about humans and, and, and what they have made. It says that God makes wars cease to the ends of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the chariots with fire. 
You see, what humanity brings in this psalm is we brought destruction. What we made was, was weapons and, and things like that. All that humanity can supply is a brokenness. But God can supply everything else. I love reading the Psalms because it reminds me that when all I bring is my brokenness, God brings wholeness. When all I have is my failure, God brings his success. When all I am is disorganized and, and I can't plan anything, God's got a plan already set out and he already knows years in the future what he's going to do. You see, the problem starts to happen when we think that we can bring something other than our humanity. You see, problems start to happen when we think that we have something to bring to the table. When everything falls apart in my life, I just start thinking in my mind of everything that I need to do to just fix all of it. And I start stressing out and worrying and becoming anxious and starting to plan and, and I start striving to make sure that it's fixed. I start thinking that I need to fix all of it. I start feeling like everything is on me to fix the problems. But when we read the Psalms, we're reminded that we can't fix those things. And we need the Lord in it. Being a human is all about needing God and God's divinity. Why? Because he brings everything that we're not. I know that as a teenager, you feel like you're not enough. I know that as you're trying to make friends with people, you know that you feel like you're just not enough. If, unless I'm this certain way, they're not going to like me. Unless I do these certain things, I'm never going to get into the college that I need to get into. I'm never going to get into the job that I need to get into. I'm never going to get the, the, the scholarship and things like that. I know that in the place of life that you are in, it feels like it's all on you and like you have to be perfect. And every time you're human, something just goes wrong. It doesn't mean that we need to become something more than human. It needs, means that we need to rely on something that is not human. On the one who is powerful, we need to rely on God. See, in verse 10, it says, Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. In this psalm, even though everything is falling apart, everything is changing around the person writing it, God's command is not to strive. It's not to start trying to figure everything out. It's not a command to, oh, well, you, just, you need to be more than human. It's a command to stop to slow down, to be still, and know that God has it taken care of. I just want you to be encouraged. If things are falling apart around you, in the midst of change, you might think that you need to do something you might feel like you absolutely, it's all on you. You have to figure it out. It's up to me to keep my parents together. It's up to me to make sure that my brother doesn't go down the, right, the wrong path. It's up to me to solve all of these problems. What God is actually wanting you to do is he's wanting you to slow down and remember that you're not God. He's God. He's the one that can take care of it. You don't need to take revenge on those people 
because he's more than capable of doing things like that. You don't need to always take care of just yourself because he is more than capable of taking care of you. So next time you're in a situation where everything's changing and you're anxious and you don't know how you're going to get through your day and you're tempted to just keep running and to just keep changing what you're doing and to just fix all of the problems yourself, take a moment Slow down, be still, and remember that God's going to take it. He's going to take care of it. He's going to handle it much better than we ever could. God, I thank you from what we learned from your word. I thank you, Lord. Um, I just thank you that you're God and we are not. Father, we will mess things up every step of the way, but you still have a plan. Lord, bring hope to the person who doesn't, they don't really know what's going on right now. They don't know why things are go, they're going through things. Remind them that you are in control and bring them joy, bring them hope, bring them some happiness in their day and some excitement, God. Um, and just knowing that you are Lord. So we love you, Jesus. We praise you and we thank you. Just be with us the rest of the night. In your name, amen. Hey guys, it's Pastor Caden. We hope that you enjoyed this message from Spectrum Youth. If you did enjoy it, drop a like and comment below to let us know what you learned. If you gave your life to the Lord, we would love to reach out to you. So you can DM us at Spectrum Youth. Lastly, make sure to subscribe and click the video to my right to continue hanging out with us online. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next week.